Alumni and students from the University of Pittsburgh are doing their part to fight the COVID-19 pandemic at home and across the world. The Pitt community is thankful and humbled by their sacrifices. Today, we hear their stories in Pitt Perspectives on Navigating a Pandemic, Alumni Heroes. I'm Dr. Jim Withers, and I'm the medical director and founder of Pittsburgh Mercy's Operation Safety Net. Um, I am also on the teaching faculty at UPMC Mercy, um, assistant clinical professor at Pitt, and I graduated from Pitt in 1984. Hi, my name is Katya Parker. I'm a public health nurse with the Allegheny County Health Department, and I graduated from Pitt School of Social Work in 2012. I'm uh, Dr. Kilko Cole. Uh, I am a director of the Asia Regional Information Center at Seoul National University. I also got the, uh, the training from the graduate school of the, uh, the Public and International Affairs, GASPIER, at the University of Pittsburgh. I earned my PhD in 2006. Hi, I'm Courtney Sheridan. I'm a volunteer with Vaccinate PA, and I'm a freshman in the School of Computing and Information. At Operation Safety Net, we uh, were what's called now street medicine program. Uh, it's, an, it's an evolving grassroots uh, field, but we were one of the first really well-established ones in the world. We go out regularly with backpacks um, and small teams into the homeless camps along the rivers under bridges of Pittsburgh. And we, uh, we create a sense of trust and solidarity with people out there. Um, it's a totally different platform for beginning healthcare. Um, I specifically work in the immunization clinic. Um, and we generally, when it's not during pandemic times, we administer vaccines to children and adults. Um, but during the pandemic specifically, we've been coordinating the COVID-19 vaccination response in Allegheny County. Um, so we've been working with Pitt School of Pharmacy, Pitt School of Nursing, um, Duquesne School of Pharmacy and, nurse, and Nursing to um, help administer vaccines across the county. The, regarding the COVID-19 case, we start this database based on the one you know, important the problems that we experience at the big uh, at the early stage of the COVID-19. Uh, and I quickly realized that other organizations like uh, the European Center of the Center of Disease Control and Prevention UC, uh, ECDC uh, try to collect the data. And WHO also collect the data. World Meters also collect the data. But uh, we needed to compare the different sources of data together. I tried to con uh, con uh, connect different variable in, uh, with this the COVID-19 data and then offer this data space uh, to the everybody. Vaccinate PA is a website that provides per location vaccine availability. We are getting the information from two places. Um, the first one is having those 100 plus volunteers make phone calls to hospitals and pharmacies across the whole state. And then they report that information back to us via a simple form on the web. And then we also have real-time availability, which is coming from another group of volunteers that we're working with. They are getting that data from chains, such as Walgreens, Rite Aid, those kind of places. And then we are also displaying that data on our website. We've had around 375,000 unique website visitors, which means unique people that have visited the site over the lifetime of the website, which is since late January. Um, so that's really cool to see. And some quick math, that's roughly, you know, that's tens of thousands of people visiting the site for the first time each week. One of the obviously first things that everyone was worried about uh, was how do you isolate when you're, you know, living in a shelter um, or in a crowded camp? And it took us a while, but we were able to, um, as, a, as a city, as a county, uh, establish a uh, safe haven hotel, we call it, where we could transfer people in order to do two things. One, uh, anyone who tested positive then would have an option to isolate within a, a hotel. And, uh, and the other is to another hotel setting where people that were really at high risk could be placed um, so that they wouldn't uh, necessarily um, get COVID and, and, and 
die. Definitely the increase in supply. Um, you know, at the beginning, there was such a shortage. We would have people calling our office, you know, just desperate for the vaccine, trying to get family and friends um, signed up for appointments. And it was just really heartbreaking at the beginning because, because of the limited supply, we just weren't able to offer it to everyone. Um, and, you know, that was one of the hardest things, especially at some of the clinics, people would show up and, you know, we just wouldn't have the supply available to give to everyone. The one uh, thing is the quality of the data issues. For example, if I compare John Salkis data with ECD's data, there was a huge debate, uh, the huge differences uh, between the different sources. For example, United Kingdom, France, or Russia, or Turkey, or even the South Korea. Korean data is, uh, show the differences uh, between the sources. It is very challenging to collect high quality data. I would definitely say it was a little overwhelming at first. Um, personally, you know, there were so many stories of the vaccine is coming, there will be vaccines soon, but it was hard before I joined this project to really visualize that coming near us because back in January, you know, maybe I knew a couple of people who work in healthcare that had gotten their first dose, but it still seemed like kind of a distant thing. Personally, because I'm, you know, with Pitt and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a teaching clinician, um, I get a lot of hope from the uh, idealism and enthusiasm of the students and the young people that joined us. Um, this almost inexhaustible supply of young people that um, that are creative, that care, um, that get satisfaction from doing the right thing, and uh, and then I can share that spirit again with them. Being at the pods and just seeing the excitement on people's faces, like when they get vaccinated, like you know. Um, I'm always happy to take pictures of people getting vaccinated so they can post on social media and just really, you know, brings home what I'm doing and like the impact that we each have um, doing the work that we do. Just seeing, you know, people's excitement and just knowing that hopefully that there's, it will be an end to this pandemic soon. The one positive sign is we produce enough. We produce enough vaccine already. The, the productivity of the vaccine has rapidly increased. So the uh, pharmaceutical company can produce enough the, uh, the vaccines, but distribution is the matter. The developed countries or the international organization should help the developing country to develop better medical systems, better information system, how to distribute this, the vaccines to people how to monitor the effectiveness of the vaccination. So we have to use this opportunity to the, the, uh, change, reform the medical system of developing country. The thing that gives me the most hope towards the end of the pandemic is seeing how many people have reached out to help us and how many people are there supporting this project and supporting getting people vaccinated. I'm so inspired by my team of, you know, other Pitt students and everyone else on the core team, by the hundreds of volunteers that are taking time out of their day every week. So many of them came to us and said, thank you for giving me a way to help. And that has been the thing that has given me the most hope over the entire course of this project.